Hi. The cryptocurrencies could potentially be a, an incredible force to for our economic freedom. They could facilitate transactions peer to peer and therefore wealth creation. They could really be a tool for freedom. But on the flip side of it, they could be a tool for our enslavement if they are a route towards the cashless society and if they are somehow hijacked uh, and ultimately controlled by governmental or establishment forces. But whichever side of this opinion divide that you fall, I think we all have to recognise that the technology is here to, t here to stay, this blockchain technology. And therefore it has to be a part of any comprehensive, you know, full education for, for both the young and the old today. Anyone that's interested in getting a self-education, knowing what's going on, simply has to know about this blockchain technology. But one of the significant barriers for any uh, would-be newcomers or new entrants into cryptocurrencies is the educational hurdle, which is pretty high and can be quite intimidating and daunting for a lot of people. So I interviewed Simon Rag to find out what he offers the newbie at his uh, website and his, in his business of uh, Crypto for Beginners. Simon, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today, mate, and welcome to the show. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Great stuff. So the, the, uh, the whole crypto space at the moment, you are offering people a nice, easy entrance, a nice, easy on-ramp, you could say, um, to, to get into the whole thing. Why do you think people should be looking into cryptocurrencies, Simon? Um, I think it offers an alternative uh, to mainstream uh, finance at the moment. Um, it's very, very immature. Um, I think the people have been misled by um, the government and in turn mainstream media narrative uh, that it's used by criminals, gun runners, drug users and so on and so forth. But we've heard that sort of narrative before when any sort of new sceptical tech that like governments and banks uh, worldwide, you know, don't know a lot about. And... Um, stop press funny old thing the banks actually have been invested in cryptocurrencies for quite a few years uh, behind the scenes um, as our governments and governments are getting into it um, ultimately you know getting into bitcoin represents freedom the ability to transact peer-to-peer i.e you know from me to yourself if you're on the other side of the world uh, instantly transacting for free um, you know in exchange for any goods or services where no third party should have any uh, say in that transaction whatsoever. Um, and now to the audience listening, you know, take that as you will for, you know, think about that for a second, the implications of that uh, and how the true free market can be displayed emotionally and physically with the use of a currency that you control and you own and no one else whatsoever has a question or say in that. At the moment, um, Bitcoin's uh, around about 8000 Two hundred dollars, something like that. Why do you think people should should invest in in these cryptos at this particular time? It's still it's still very very early days. Bitcoin uh, is is ten years old, just over. Uh, you know, there's there's reports of it dying. Bitcoin dying. It's it's going to it's going to go away. It's gonna, it's a not an annoyance, especially if you you know you jump into uh, articles such as CNBC, BBC articles, and so on. Um, you know, the price thing for me personally, the price thing doesn't matter because I'm looking forward, you know, five, 10 years where, you know, the, the current fiat, if you like, you know, US dollar, Euro, um, GBP, uh, debt based system that we're living in that has, you know, been exacerbated by money printing and, uh, fictitious rates, uh, such as, uh, you know, interest rates, GDP, unemployment and so on. Um, the price of eight thousand two hundred or eight thousand dollars or so to me is ultimately irrelevant. It's all about stacking as many satoshis, um, of which you know one satoshi is a hundred millionth of one bitcoin. So for those looking to get into it, you don't need eight thousand two hundred dollars. You just need you know a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds, a couple of euros, and that's that's literally it. Um, you know, so the eight thousand two hundred dollar thing. Yeah, I can see us pulling back to seven thousand two hundred dollars. Seven thousand uh, dollars is a result of looking at price charts and getting all technical about it. But the long term fundamentals for me massively outweigh the short term, you know, psychology of still relating Bitcoin to the dollar, pound or euro and wanting to withdraw that any time to, to make a short term profit. Now, this is a you know, this is a long term thing. 
Uh, I think it's it's interesting that a lot of people will always uh, sort of argue that they've kind of missed the boat. Oh, you know, I wished I'd got in when it was sixpence or something like that. But um, I, I, I agree with you. I think there's, there's never a, a bad time to get in, really, because, um, you know, it's something that, 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 that I think will inevitably be adopted wider. And, uh, OK, there are sort of uh, people look at the track record and the, the sort of boom back in um, <clears throat> end of 2017 and all that good stuff. Do you see the crypto stuff as, you know, a, a tool for our freedom or... Um, I mean, obviously, the, the central banks, as you say, they've been dabbling in cryptos. And, uh, you know, we've heard recently from Mark Carney at the UN during the uh, Greta Thunberg theatrics uh, speaking to, you know, to reveal the the uh, um, the, the crypto dimension um, for, for future banking stuff. So so we, we know that it's it's in the pipeline. How, how, how do you see it playing out? Because there are some that think it could be could be used by the sort of World Government Club. And there's the other sort of side of the argument that says, well, actually, it could be a really useful tool for freedom. Maybe it's both. What's your take? Yeah, there's um, there's a wide range of cryptocurrencies out there, you know, something like 2,000, 2,500. And first and foremost, um, the natural business cycle and this bear market that's uh, finishing or yet to fully finish, in my opinion, um, will wash out some of the, you know, poor rubbish projects, if you like, as in any business cycle that you see with stocks and companies and so on. So that needs to occur. Uh, and I think in, you know, sort of three, four, five, six years time, we'll only see into the maybe hundreds uh, as projects uh, collaborate, you know, team up and, you know, put resources, you know, where they need it most. But I think what what the audience needs to realize is you've got several different cryptocurrencies that represent, you know, have thousands of different use cases, you know, typified by them being two, two, you know, two and a half thousand or whatever it is now. Uh, the main ones the ones that are competing to be the digital cash king, you know, your, your, your Bitcoin, although arguably for me personally, that is a store of value. And I think one day you might see uh, other cryptocurrencies as they are now on exchanges, valued versus Bitcoin, but in a broader and more global sense, um, you know, cryptocurrencies such as Monero, uh, Epic Cash, Dash uh, and so on, all competing to be digital cash, that one-to-one peer-to-peer uh, private or anonymous based cryptocurrency that um, represents, you know, true, pure free markets uh, in action. Um, and then you've got other cryptocurrencies like, you know, your sort of Ethereum, your EOS and so on being uh, decentralized uh, platforms of smart contracts uh, competing. And then you've got other ones that represent, you know, certain utilities or securities where you might have a stake in a, in a company like you would with a stock, stock or, you know, shares in a particular stock uh, and so on really. So there's quite a, it's quite a vast array of cryptocurrencies trying to fulfill different use cases. Um, and my take on the bank as one, you know, the global ones such as uh, Ripple and the XRP program is that it doesn't solve anything. Uh, it doesn't solve anything that we've, we've had already with, you know, currencies devalued up to the hill, you know, US dollar, the pound and euro, easing measures, printing, printing, printing. And all that's doing is create an excess supply of currency. And it's pretty easy to understand. You, you create an ex- excess supply of one thing versus a limited supply, whether it be houses, land, cars, fine art, wine, and so on, gold and Bitcoin included. That's going up massively in supply. So if that's going up in supply and this isn't, that's going to be valued even more. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, and Ripple, going back to the Ripple argument, what you're seeing with that there is it's, it's maintained by centralized power, government and banks. They can print that at free will. The Ripple will increase it. Is yeah. Ripple um, is that not a, a, a finite number of, of actual digital tokens coins? Is that one which they can inflate? Yeah, they can inflate it. It's showing on you know Coin Market Cap and all your other um, sort of your Coin Paprika sort of coin comparison sites, if you like. Um, but yeah, currently you know it shows token supply, but they can inject more you know as they wish and need. Um, and yeah, there's, there's plenty to go around for the entire population and then some. Um, and it's pretty fast, you know, given its merits. It's not as fast as some other cryptocurrencies I can think of. Um, and you know there are fees associated with that. So yeah, for me, it's a big no-no, and it's just a complete digital version compared to the analog cash situation which we've got currently in existence today in a system that is dying and will will be dead within 10 years. Yeah, there are certainly a lot of cryptos out there that have got very good use cases on there and, and yeah. they, they look like there's, there's been a lot of uh, research and development gone into them over the past year or so, 18 months. And uh, it just needs that 
little shove of mass adoption, doesn't it? It, it needs that. It almost, dare I say, it needs some sort of financial crisis to happen, which of course yeah. is quite likely anyway. And you know, back out there in in fiat currency world, um, it all. But but it, it's something like that really could potentially drive a lot of people into the crypto space, couldn't it? Yeah, well, that's it. And what the public don't realise is, you know, the regulatory powers that be have enabled uh, institutions and hedge funds to come into the space and uh, start to launch their products. Um, that's a massive, massive bullish sign, provided that these products are physically backed and not derivatives, you know, which are akin to what we've currently got in the system, you know, financial derivatives, paper products, paper gold, paper silver products that don't represent the real item in a one for one manner. Tell us a little bit about uh, crypto for beginners, because there seems to me that the you know there is there's a there's a gap there for for people to sort of get into this technology. It it is quite a challenge for people to get their heads around. So tell us a bit about crypto for beginners and and, and how and why you created it and so forth. What I teach represents the, the, the fundamentals of cryptocurrency that you've got to own yourself, you've got to own your finances, and take full responsibility because. You know, people are protesting nowadays and looking for the government to to make change that favours them. Stop, stop press. Your best interests are not their best interests, and, and sooner or later, the people are going to realise that the hard, you know, the hard, the hard and harsh way. And I'm trying to make them avoid that and, and take it down the easier route. But there's a there's a lot of myths to dispel. You know, a lot of mainstream news and media coverage to to you know blow away and change some minds and perspectives. But um, I think I'll get there slowly but surely. What sort of um, storage do you advocate, Simon? Do, you know, there, there are various sort of wallets on there. You know, the Nano Ledger is quite a, a good one. Paper wallets. Do, do you have any recommendations for, for, for beginners? Uh, yeah, looking into creating paper wallets offline, uh, having an air gap laptop, a laptop that, or, you know, mobile phone device that never goes online, that sort of thing. If you've got a spare old one that you usually want to throw out, uh, they're pretty handy for using two things factor authentication with the SIM card removed, by the way, to prevent SIM, SIM card uh, port hacks. Um, you alluded to there, the Ledger devices, Ledger Nano S, uh, if you've got a bit more funds going, the Ledger, the Ledger Blue, that's got improved security. Uh, the Keep Key device is a great Bitcoin one, uh, and the Trezor device uh, is pretty cool as well. Uh, but there'll be, you'll see, I mean, these are the devices that have been around a couple of years now, um, and the paper wallet is, you know, the quintessential uh, security really went, you know, created safely offline. Uh, but there are solutions coming, um, you know, sort of counterparty solutions managed by others. But at the end of the day, uh, not your keys, not your crypto applies. And if you can't see that private key related to the public key of that account, essentially, that crypto is not yours and you don't have access or rights to control it, i.e. send. Do you have any sort of favourite favorite cryptocurrencies, um, ERC20 tokens or, or some of the, you know, the bigger contenders around Bitcoin for the, you know, store of value slot, it could be said, you know, Bitcoin Cash and, or Ethereum Litecoin? Personally, yeah, Bitcoin uh, as a store of value, I don't think anything can break it uh, based on its SHA-256 algorithm uh, and encryption ultimately there. Uh, that's been around 10 years, it's got history on its side. Um, so that is the main store of value. Um, and other ones are like, you know, decentralized, um, you know, decentralized, what is it called? Smart contract platform, EOS, EOS, definitely for sure. Uh, Chainlink, you know, the, the Google and Oracle uh, backing there. That's that, that's that's going to be big and massive. Um, and also on the, the peer-to-peer digital, you know, private digital cash side of things, uh, Monero for sure. Um, everyone should learn to download a Monero wallet. Uh, on their phones, as many, you know, Cake Wallet, for example, is a, is a great mobile wallet for Monero. And uh, there's also the full node you can run on your computer as well, which has the entire blockchain. But it takes a while to download. From now, it'll probably take about 12 hours. Uh, it takes up a bit of memory, but there's nothing you know, nothing bad about it at all. But you, can, you can even mine still with CPUs and GPUs. Uh, and also, similarly, another proof of work coin on the, running on the Mimble Wimble. No laughs. Running on the Mimble Wimble protocol is the... Um, is Epic, Epic Cash, which has been out uh, just over a month just now, uh, and that's could be, could be argued even more secure than uh, you know than Monero. Uh, great community I'm involved with that mining that, and you know it's got Bitcoin's emission rate. Uh, so the last Epic Cash will be out in, in the year 2140, 
um, which is pretty cool. Um, but also you can mine it across three different algorithms. So, so one for your CPUs, one for your GPUs, your graphics cards, and one for your ASICs. Um, and the way that works is it will, in the early years, it will reward CPU uh, and to a degree GPU miners more. And then sixth, seventh year sort of onwards, ASIC miners will be getting rewarded uh, more handsomely. Uh, 20 transactions a second. Uh, and yeah, you can send via using a certain file. You can send by a file type as such, a specific file type, or you can send with a HTTP IP address. So it works by sending from IP addresses to IP addresses rather than traditional public keys, as you see with you know the likes of Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. So, so um, am I right in understanding EOS as a, a whole new platform, or, or does it sit on the Ethereum platform? I can't remember which now. EOS is its own is its own blockchain. Uh, EOS IO, the EOS IO, the underlying code is its own blockchain uh, as a direct competitor to Ethereum. Although that tribalism plays out every day, where you see a lot of people touting coins as shit coins left, right, and centre. Um, but with inter blockchain communication, that will eradicate the when it when it does fully you know unveil itself. Inter blockchain communication will. You know, stop a lot of rivalry and, and, and show that coins and assets can talk to each other. Different blockchains can interact with each other. Um, so with EOS IO, you've got you know various uh, DApps, decentralized applications. Whether it will be gambling, betting apps, um, encyclopedias of information that's verifiable on chain, um, and voting, for example. You know, so there's a lot of real world use cases um, that can be used uh, directly on EOS. Um, and one day you might be using a web extension that finishes .eos. And is it actually faster than the Ethereum blockchain? Yeah, yeah, massively so. Um, I've I've lost track of how many hundreds of thousands of transactions I've I've done on uh, EOS. Um, so yeah, you know they've, they've they've had something like I think about eighty four, eighty six million um, transactions uh, in a twenty four hour period. So you know a thousand transactions a second sustained for twenty four hours or thereabouts. Yeah. Will EOS is it likely to? Um, you know, become a currency as well, or is it one of these platforms that, that has a use case for, for all of these other applications yeah. effectively to run on its blockchain? That's that's a very good question uh, because the way I've used EOS, I've used it as a currency, but the tokens based on EOS that run atop the EOS IO code, you know, as a second layer, if you like, um, I've used as currencies as well. So there's multi currencies and multi worlds going on, you know, and non non-fungible tokens are going to be massive, um, you know, to digital real world assets backed up by a token on the chain, that sort of thing. And trading of digital assets that, you know, editable and guys are selling, you know, the, the kids and teenagers today are creating items online and selling them for coins and digital assets and tokens. And this is the way we're moving. Um, you know, the old and bald retiring don't quite understand that, but this is the way we're moving. And, you know, to stay ahead of the times, this is what you've got to do. You've got to pivot and be flexible and you know read up about this stuff because this is this is the way we're going i'm afraid and uh you know the, the governments of banks don't like it it's out of their hands it's not it's not ultimately under their control and rightly so so if, if i was a newcomer coming to you crypto for beginners um you know find your website and uh, what, what what can you offer the beginner you know could, what what's what sort of packages do you do you offer and so forth yeah so basically um I put, I put out a free newsletter so people can subscribe to a free monthly newsletter, which is basically a scaled down version of the premium one. So I'm not off it, offering essentially as detailed insights, trading information, that sort of thing and ideas. But yeah, signing up, uh, three different options, uh, 12 99 a month, 34 99 for a quarter or 129 99 for a year. Um, and you'll get a full premium newsletter on there, uh, trading insights, a whole a to Z dictionary of definitions and uh, video how-tos, written guides uh, with that as well. Uh, and, and, you know, stacks of information, dispelling myths, uh, and lot, you know, lot, just generally lots of lots of ideas that you, things that you're not you're not going to see in the mainstream media uh, because they're not there to ultimately help you. And my goal is to help other people and, and spread that information and you know go against the uh, divide and conquer uh, fear stricken mentality that's being touted at the moment really it's interesting isn't it the crypto space because um earlier this year when uh, i think it was back in june i think um i was i was over in the czech republic briefly at, at a at a wedding and uh, bitcoin was sort of up again sort of pushing the thirteen thousand dollar mark and yeah. there was much 
much uh, excitement about uh, you know where all of the you know ERC twenty tokens, some of the the, the lesser tokens, were, 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 what were they going to do in Bitcoin's wake? Yeah, and I, and I was you know very eagerly watching the scene, but unfortunately we, we don't seem to have, or the crypto space doesn't seem to have built up on on that um, on on that on that sort of uh, you know mini mini bull run. It's so difficult, isn't it, to to sort of predict what's going to happen in this space. There, there, there are many people we know we can listen to, you know, Jeff Berwick and Ed Bugos and and and, and all of these other yeah. sort of commentators over there. But really, ultimately, no one's got a crystal ball, have they? Have you got one there somewhere at crypto? No, I think I think ultimately the only way is up because more people are adopting it out of you know out of fear, not greed, you know, out of necessity, the ability to transact. I mean, look, look at countries that are having you know sanctions imposed, uh, it, even at state level. Venezuela, for example, are, are circumventing. Uh, and other countries that matter actually. Venezuela are, you know, they're, they're circumventing uh, sanctions by the US because the US are essentially, and they don't want to let you, let anyone know about this, they're going down kicking and screaming because they're backed by the US dollar that has been printed and is now being printed with QE to infinity into oblivion. Uh, so it's being devalued and anyone holding it or any fiat currencies, and you're going to see a flip, you're going to see a massive uh, generational shift of wealth um, that will rival, you know, the Great Depression, big time. Well, it would be good, wouldn't it? It would be exciting to, to see, you know, the uh, ability for governments to inflate currencies come to an end. I mean, that, that was one of the things that really excited me about Bitcoin when I first heard that, you know, there are only going to be 21 million coins and, uh, you know, it's going to, the, the, the supply is going to tail off. I thought, what a good idea. But, yeah, I mean, it, we, we, we need some sort of catalyst, don't we, to... to to increase uh, public adoption, really, don't we? Because I mean, I, I haven't caught drift of any crypto news in the in the mainstream media. Yeah. I try and try and keep my ears to the ground on the on the mainstream media just to sort of check out what what the propaganda is, you know. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's all very quiet, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and it's all very quiet. And contrary to you know the end of 2017, early 2018, where it was so so noisy, now is the best time uh, best time to invest. Uh, trade or whatever, get into it because if you live as a contrarian to mainstream news, uh, you'll be better off. If you if you buy into things as a contrarian while it's quiet, you'll be ultimately better off. It's a really good point, isn't it? You know, we yeah. we look now at the depressed market, and there's a tendency for people to sort of lick wounds and think, "Oh, I'm not getting involved with that." Yeah. But but really, you know, when the prices are are deflated, it is the time to invest, isn't it? And yeah. It, it's so easy to want to jump on that bandwagon when it's things are rising, yeah. you know, but it's, that's really not the time. That's the time to be sort of taking profits and stuff. And it's these sort of lessons are very difficult to learn, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But I mean, I'm ultimately I'm not viewing uh, Bitcoin. I mean, to me, there's, there's three ways about going about, about it. And this relates to altcoins, which are anything another cryptocurrency other than uh, Bitcoin. But the three ways of going about it, you can view the asset or cryptocurrency, what you're getting into in terms of dollar, pound, euro value, and what you're looking to make out of that short term. Bearing in mind on the back burner, that system is dying and will be coming to end uh, over the next, it could be next year, it could be the end of this year, it could be three to five years, it could be inside 10 years. But the writing's on the wall for that, for sure. Um, the other thing is you could go into an altcoin, buy it and be measuring it in Satoshi or Bitcoin value and trading that versus Bitcoin to increase your Satoshi value. Well, the third option is to really research that asset, that crypto asset, and actually, you know, back the team, engage with them on Telegram, Discord, Slack, all the different social media channels, and back that cryptocurrency and ideology and really buy into that and stay with that asset. And I think those are the three sort of main ways of, of getting into cryptocurrency rather than the short-term fear and greed based arc and make make some cash here now sort of thing. I can listen to the news and, and be rich next week, next month because uh, stop press, that ain't happening. Um, and the volatility is only is only going to increase as more volume, you know, more trades, more population, more people get into this space. You're going to see, you know, thousands of dollar moves north, five, ten thousand dollar moves north. But, you know, there will be pullbacks from whales, people who hold large amounts of that crypto asset, Bitcoin or whatever it might, you know, happen to be, they will be selling at, you know, short and mid and long term tops. So, you know, you will see moves, 
of two, three, five thousand dollars south in a matter of, you know, inside a day uh, almost. And the volatility is going to increase and it will get to a point of near saturation ultimately later on in, you know, years to come where that volatil volatility will calm down um, as the, you know, as the price, as the price increases, you know, as it, as it stabilizes. There are a lot of people that, that, that say the instability, um, you know, puts them off and, you know, the, the market has to stabilize before a lot of people will come, come on board. But, you know, there are a lot of people that, that have used this sort of analogy of, uh, you know, the Wild West and, and a kind of uh, a genuine free market. Yeah. I, you know, I, I would like to think that it's a genuine free market. These days, I'm so skeptical about all of the markets, you know, the precious mar metal markets, the, the, the uh, you know, the, the um, what do you call them? <sighs> <laughs> Stock exchanges. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm very, very suspicious of, of, of all of this market manipulation of stock exchanges, cryptos, everything. You, you, we just don't know what's going on, do we? And uh, I'd like to think it's this great free market and Wild West scenario. But uh, I guess, you know, time will tell. We'll have to just sit back and watch, see what happens. So remind us again of your details there, Simon. Uh, yeah, so you can either go to uh, c-4-b.com or crypto-4, uh, that's the number 4, uh, hyphen beginners.com. Uh, either of those sites, uh, all details on there, can reply by email, uh, telephone number, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, you can, people can sign up to the free or premium service, uh, should, they, should they wish. It's good if we can get out there and sort of get people, get people thinking more, get people, yeah, get people to overcome that rather tricky on ramp because there there is a uh, you know slight hurdle of self education that just needs to be overcome and uh, and this is where you come in so uh, it's great that that you're providing the you know the resource that you are with crypto for beginners it's really good news so um you know all you viewers and listeners out there I would urge you to take a look at uh, Simon's website mm -hmm. and if you feel that that uh, you know you like some help getting educated into this crypto space a great resource there. So thank you so much, uh, Simon, for taking the time to join us today. Cheers. And uh, I do urge you all to visit the website, lawfulrebel.com. Um, loads more there for these um, outside-the-box solutions and so forth. So check out the website. And thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time. Yeah.